Hello guys, so now I'm going to be going over local file inclusion again, but in this chance we are going to be doing SSH, SSH log portioning and we are going to be using um, WFuzz for us to find more files um, or to see if we can find more files. So we are going to be using um, WFuzz and we are going to try to do it via SSH on our Kali Linux and it's not going to work. So therefore, we're going to have to use Metasploit just to do the SSH log poisoning part, okay? So this one should be fun, and it should be cool. And the box I'll be doing is Corrosion 1, and you can download it from VonHub. It is free, um, and it is available for virtual machine. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So here's the, the part that has the the file inclusion and we can test this by going to Etsy um, password we can see that we are able to do um, local file inclusion inclusion over here if we go ahead and go to view the source it looks a lot better so we can see all the users on this machine we can see a different user that is not that is not common uh, which is the real-time kit um, and open VPN we can see over here and we also see a user Randy okay but this box if we do a quick scan of it we do an mmap 10 10 10 9 we are going to see that we have SSH open all right so we want to hit the logs um, we want to find where the logs of SSH is um, is in the machine um, and by default if you go just do a Google search for it. So if you do um, SSH logs for Linux, um, view the logs, or we can say, instead of view logs, we can say the logs location. Let's see, right here. So it is in the var log auth.log. So if you go over here and you try to hit that file, we are going to see that we are able to view that file. So therefore, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing log poisoning. Because as you can see in the logs, whenever you try to connect, it is going to say um, invalid user, and it's going to say the user. So we are going to be able to put um, a reverse, not a reverse or a command execution. So let's say if we go to SSH, into let's say with hello at 10.10.10.9 and just enter don't enter any password is fine if we do a refresh over here for the logs you can see over here that it says that the session was open for the root by uuid over here it says invalid user uh, is hello right so it is specifying the user so whatever you put in the user right in the user option it is going to present it over here so we can poison this over here by sending a a, a php um, command execution um, but one of the things is that it doesn't work for some reason for linux but i'm going to show you a workaround for that all right so that is one so now let's see if we want to if we can if we want to find other files that we are able to to include in here and if you want to look for more files you can use wfuzz for this and the payload that we're going to be using is if you go to payload of all things if you go to payload of all things in here we are going to find a file that basically has all the path for file inclusion so if you go to file inclusion and then you go to files uh, you go to let's see you go to intruders over here so the one that we want to look for is the one that says Linux files so here are a list of Linux files that we might have access to so what you want to do is you want to view a raw and you want to go ahead and download it for to your Kali Linux so we can use it with WFOS. I already have it, but if you do a wget and paste that in here, um, you can download it. Go ahead and remove because I already have it in there. So now we want to run 
um, WFuzz. So with WFuzz, you know, if you go to WFuzz and press enter, you are going to see the some of the options, but it's better if you just do the help command and this one tells you everything. So in here we are going to be using the HC command, which is for hide the response with a specified with a specified code. So the specified code is going to be 404, not found. So we don't want to show, I don't want WFOS to show me the 404. So 404 basically means it didn't find anything. So I don't want, if it doesn't find anything, um, I don't want you to display it. And we're also going to display the characters. If it is less, if it is equals to zero, I don't want to see those, all right? So the, that's our, some of the options that we're going to be using. So let's go to W fuzz in here. And we are going to say C, W for word list. The word list that we're going to find is the Linux files. In here it's going to be the HC, right? 404, I don't want it to show me anything that 404. And also if the characters is equals to zero, I don't want you to show me that. And then we need to enter the entire path of where the file inclusion is. And then at the end over here, where it says fuzz, this is what um, it's going to be trying. So whatever is in this text document, it is going to put it over here. So basically it's going to look for whatever we have in this Linux files, right? And that's the one that we got from payloads of all things. If you do a cat, so it's going to try all of these locations for us, right? And the good thing is that we are telling it that if you get something that says 404, not found, I don't want you to display it. And if you say the characters, it's equals to zero. So if it find no, if it doesn't find any characters, and I also don't want it to show it. And then we say fuzz at the end. So let's go ahead and press enter and see what else we find. So we see that we have the HD password, uh, etc password. We also have the etc host. So if you go over here and you replace it, you replace this over here etc host. You can see that we see, you can see the host file. Um, what else do we have? We have the mounts, the version, so you can see the version. So that is an automatic way to look at the, um, you can see the version over here, to, to look at the file inclusion that we can add, right? Just by doing WFuzz and looking for Linux files from that, this text file from payloads of all things. We see the Apache 2 ports config, so you can take a look at that if you want to. And that is going to be the last one that we want to look at because you get right you get you get what I'm doing all right so now like I said before we are going to be doing log poisoning by replacing a, a actual user with a payload uh, with a PHP payload or with a PHP command execution right and for this what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to, let me just go ahead and copy and paste it from over here. Let's go ahead and clear this. I just want to do this. Um, so basically SSH in single quotes, all of this. And also over here should be, this should be double quotes. Right, e, yeah, it should be like this. So if you press enter, you can see that it's saying that the remote username contains invalid characters and it won't go. Um, it doesn't do anything. I think this is because the latest version of SSH um, put in some, I guess, whitelist of what should be included in a user. So we won't be able to poison the, the SSH logs via just the SSH um, daemon from Kali Linux. But I have a workaround and the workaround for this is just to use a MS, MSF console. So we're just going to be using the auxiliary scanner. So an SSH login basically. And let's go ahead and wait for, to, for it to load. And from here, when you use Metasploit, it doesn't tell you that you have an invalid user. It just goes ahead and sends that user. And when it sends that user, it's going to poison the logs. So the let's see the so yeah so the module that we're going to be using is to use auxiliary scanner for ssh right ssh and then ssh login 
cool now if we do show options you can see the options you can have username or you can have a file that you can pass or you can have a username as pass um, and all of that so the one that I want to use is going to be just the set username set password so the username that we want to set is equals to this PHP system get that s so that's going to be the command execution it's going to be s and set password you can set the password to whatever you want this time this time i'm going to use to say one two three four five six it doesn't matter because i just want it to be logged in the server so then i can get um code execution right so that is good over here um and we need to set the our host to 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 9 all right and then we can clear this and we can run it before we run it you are going to see over here that we are at line 49 refresh looks like there's more but we haven't run our uh, meta we haven't run the meta exploit so let's go ahead and run it now it's going to start your brute force and it it's going to brute force with that username that we put in let's go ahead and refresh and you can see over here that it used an uh, unknown user um, and, we're, you, and it says invalid user over here and you can tell right here that it doesn't tell you what the user is remember before we use hello but in this one it doesn't tell you the user right you can see it right here invalid user it should be in here but that means that it was executed so now if we do a um, ampersand over here where is it right here and then what we want to do is s equals and then we just say id and you can see over here that we have it down here so you see the whole the, the id so that means that we have code execution we can also see the host name, right? The host name is corrosion. You can see it over here, right? You can see it. So it got executed three times. So we have the code three times, which is fine, right? It doesn't hurt. And one another test um, that I love doing, uh, say no, that I love doing is the the TCP dump. So why is this, in this maximizing? Did I crash my Kali Linux? I think my Kali Linux crash. Let's go ahead and give it a minute. All right, looks like it's it's better now. Why can I not expand this? Oh, you, you. Yeah, I think it froze somehow, some reason. Okay, let me go ahead and reboot my machine. Okay, so we are back. My Kali Linux is back. So now, what I want to do is I want to see if I can ping my machine just to verify. We can do a sudo. Um, TC, TCP dump and my my interface is ETH1 the one that is connected to this machine right and then I'm going to say ICMP so I'm going to start listening for ICMP packets and I'm going to ping from the corrosion machine before I do that I want to do the URL encode encode and it's going to be ping 10 10 10 5 here it is url encoded right so i want to copy this and see if i'm able to ping myself let's put this next to each other there we go and here sort of host name i want to ping my machine and there we go so it's able to ping my machine which is awesome so we have remote code execution all that is great so now let's go ahead and do it clear and now from here what i want to do is i want to listen for nc lvp on port 123 and now i want to send a um i'm going to url encode and this one is going to be the um the the shell that i'm going to be sending back so bash c batch i here it is this is the reverse shell that i'm going to be using 
and I'm going to URL encoder first and this is so it is um, so I know that I'm not missing anything from this machine or from the from the URL let me go ahead and do like ID making sure it still works so yep still works you can see over here dub dub data so whenever we get the show back it's going to be via dub dub data so let me go ahead and go back to this tab where I'm listening on execute this it did not work I'm listening on oh this one is to be five that's what it is still didn't work let me go ahead and do a URL encode and I want to put that five over here there we go copy go back in here and let's go ahead and remove all of this paste my URL encode again before I do that go ahead and go back to my listener and this one still didn't work 10 10 10 5 I have too many tens in here that's what it is let me go delete one that still didn't work let me go ahead and do this URL encoding again there we go copy it and over here making sure nothing is left send it still didn't work so this this shell over here it's not working I'm listening on port one two three four let's go ahead and try it without URL encoding it is this guy right here 10 10 10 5 and see what happens still didn't get a show back to my machine okay so let's try this again now I know what I was doing so when I were whenever I was doing the URL encode I was not encoding the entire command I needed to put double quotes inside the entire command and then single quotes inside uh, what, what I wanted to execute which is over here so it was in URL encoding everything um, and this one was the first one that I did first mistake was that I put four I put 10 10 10 10 5 instead of 10 10 10 5 um, but let's go ahead and give it a try with this one now URL encode it this one should work copy I'm listening I put port one two three four five one two three four should work also but let's go ahead and see if this one works and there we go I got that reverse show back looking good if we do ID host name um, host name no wait host name there we go I have config is there I have config in here yes there is you can see 10 10 10 9 and we are in the corrosion so for this one this was this one was a, a really fun one we really had to you know we found the basically the LFI well we, we started working with LFI we downloaded the um, the payloads of all things um, file Linux um, files that text uh, we did a WFOS and in there we were able to find other um, other files that we were able to include in this local file inclusion then we tried to do the SSH log poisoning by just doing SSH from Kali Linux we saw that that didn't work so we went and opened um, Metasploit and we did it from Metasploit so we successfully poisoned the SSH logs with Metasploit and after that we did a test with the TCP dump to see if we were able to ping from that code execution um, we were able to ping and then I ran into some issues with my <laughs> with my reverse show, but I was able um, to get it right and fix it. And I got that reverse show, which is really cool. So this is it for this video, guys. Um, you know, we learned some cool things like how to use WFUS, how to log poison SSH, and how to get a reverse show back. Thank you for watching. Like always, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.